So we've carried out our separation, and now we've got our solvent that hopefully contains our product. It may contain a few impurities as well. And we're going to need to remove the solvent. Before we can do that, we need to dry the solvent, because the separation itself wasn't particularly very precise at separating out the water from the solvent. And things like ether itself, even though it's immiscible in water, can contain up to 5% water in it. So we want to get rid of that water. And we do that with a compound called magnesium sulfate. So magnesium sulfate binds water very strongly. It goes from anhydrous magnesium sulfate to the heptahydrate. So every molecule of magnesium sulfate will bind seven molecules of water. But it's really good at pulling water out of solution. Important thing, it's an inorganic compound, so it's not soluble in organic solvents. And also, the hydrate that's formed isn't soluble either, so we can filter that off afterwards. The question we're always asked is how much magnesium sulfate is required, and the answer is enough. You need to add the magnesium sulfate until you can tell that all the water has been removed. And you can tell that because when you first add the magnesium sulfate, have a look in there, you might be able to see that it all sticks to the bottom, and it looks, to all intents and purposes, very wet. It's the only way I can really describe it. Once you add enough magnesium sulfate, then the magnesium sulfate, as you can see, it's a very fine powder, and it will then swirl around a bit like essentially a sort of toy snow globe. And hopefully you can see that happening here. It's very, very freely flowing, and it settles slowly to the bottom. And at that point, you've dried your solvent, and you're ready to filter off and remove that magnesium sulfate.